Like you can hear that is different. 98.4. <laughs> I'm too cheap, man. <laughs> Super excited to show you this is a live lesson, real lesson with a student that made unbelievable changes, like crazy changes. You're gonna watch this golfer go from around 88 mile an hour with their seven iron to over 100 miles an hour in one session with measured data with the team at JD Golf Academy. This was so much fun to be part of. Can't wait for you to see this. And there's so much we can all learn from these sessions, hopefully. You're swinging with tour speed mm. hand, tour speed hand speed, okay. and you're only getting 88 mile an hour out of that. So, so, so the way you're pressuring your hands down on your intent from the top of your swing is way too passive. Okay. So you can see here, that's where your hands are peaking out in terms of speed, mm -hmm. okay? Look how close the club head is mm -hmm. to the golf ball. Okay, right. now at the top of your action, when we reach our peak grip speed, mm -hmm. which is 22 miles per hour, which is 22.12 miles per hour, which is nippy, mm -hmm. okay. So that's quick. That's, that's as quick as a tour pro, okay. You have lost, what was it, 95, 38 degrees okay. of angle. Now, if I bring the tour average on next door to you, their peak grip speed is also 22 miles per hour, so identical. They've lost one degree, yeah. and look where their golf club is. Yeah. It's still above their shoulder line. Your golf club is, in terms of your peak grip speed, there. So you can see there is absolutely zero time for you to get any energy from that golf club into the golf ball. We can see how your horizontal force is really late. Okay, the peak of your lateral force, which is the purple graph. Okay. So that's your left to right force. That's your sideways force. Okay. okay. Your rotational force is actually quite good in terms of the timing, but then the vertical force is way too late. Okay. So, so the vertical force is healthy. Uh, I would want more. Yeah, but it's healthy. It's not disaster. Like, you've got three strong peaks there. Correct. But you are not generating the rewards for the amount of force that you put into the ground. Because of the time it happened. Yeah, Correct. because I, I could... You're basically doing long jump, and you run through the pit, get a foul, and then you jump later. Yeah. Uh, but you jump further than anyone else yeah. in your bracket of player, yeah. but you don't hit that board. No. You're like you or just or you're yeah I'm or yeah exactly, early, exactly. Late, yeah. no you're late, late. You're, you're, you're you're through the sandpit okay, yeah fine. the intent from the top of the action it's taken you far too long to get this grip accelerating your first movement we need to get these hands pressuring down quicker okay, okay which is going to do what to my knees well, hopefully yeah. yeah load them but what am I doing you're going to what are you doing at what the am top I doing at the you are passive as hell and just straightening this leg. Yeah. So basically what we see from Mark is he's really locking out his legs on the downswing. So he's backswing, downswing, right leg really locks out, which then gets him basically just using kind of horizontal force, doesn't really get out of his vertical force very early, which is costing him strike and it's costing him uh, distance. And for so many golfers, those two things are intertwined. When people are losing so much speed, they often then compromise low point. They kind of really do blend. The more you teach and the more you measure, you just see this time and time again. So what we started to do is move Mark out of his safety zone and feeling very kind of static with his legs with a follow through, which really makes low point fluffy dust, fats, fins, just not very good strikes, which we could see on the gear system, as well as the dual force plates, we started to get him to understand that he has some force this way when he hits the shot. He, he uses a good amount of force. He just uses it at the wrong time. We thought if we could get him using that at the right time, it's gonna increase his speed because it'll get that force into the action rather than after it, which often gets people delivering better loft, better angle of attacks, which leads to better strikes. But let's put it into some real terms. You are, your club head speed is 80 miles an hour. You're the yep. fittest person in this room by a mile. You're Correct. probably the strongest person in this room by a mile. Agreed. I'm swinging that club at 90 miles an hour. Right. 
Yeah. So you should be so frustrated that this ridiculous specimen can do that <laughs> compared to what you're doing. And if you think... Does think, that make sense? And, and I feel that. Yeah. You know, I don't feel... Physically, we could do a test. If we went to yeah, TPI yeah, yeah. and did their you're test, winning. they're going to go, well, hang on, this guy should break. be swinging at 125 yeah. driver. Yeah. yeah. But you're swinging at 100. Yeah. So, so yeah. we, we yeah. see tour pros yeah. with a slower hand speed mm. with 95 mile an hour club head. Mm. And I can see that. I do yeah. feel like I lose everything as it comes. You know, yeah, there isn't that it's thing. passive, it's safe. But you're creating forces in these plates. It's just right. way too late. Yeah. It needs to be way earlier. Right. It needs to be effective. Yeah. It, needs, it can't be hit, oh, there's a force. Because yeah. we need that force that on the ball. Force. When did you do that again, Mark? So you, when I mean, he flexes his knees. So I'm, if there. I want to put force into that, I'm like, I'm already, so from about here, finishing up, I'm already starting to get these plates moving in my feet. And look, like, look at the right knee flex, do really that again, Mark. Never, I'm really trying look to. At, that's the most point he's got, a right knee flex. Yours is at address. So you're, 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 you got flex, mm -hmm. straight, and then you stay straight. And, okay. Yeah, which and is a You start catching blocker. up like way So you're late. just using nothing from the floor. Yeah. As Mark did that movement, he loaded those knees. Mm -hmm. That's our point, that we can use the spring out of the, yes. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. So your pelvis lift and your pelvis drop is going to be more aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Should we do some practice swings? So, so just show me. Go top, top in, top uh, the swing in the same position. Now where are you going? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I want you to feel like there's real good intent. I don't want you passive, slow here. Okay. okay. I want you pulling on this grip. Okay. Okay. I want you putting some speed into that golf club okay. early. The tour pros are reaching their peak grip speed. Here, okay. within literally inches of the start of that downswing. Okay. We're peaking out ours. Okay, so it's a bit kind of... It's very passive at the top, yeah. yeah. And it needs not to be. 100%, because okay. you're strong. Okay. You can apply force to that grip. And use your knees. Go on through. Yeah, and come up more as you come yeah. through. So go Explode down. out. You're going down yeah. to come up. It's a reaction. So you don't go down to be Stay down. down. You go down because it, you're jumping. Yeah. yeah. So my golf swing, I'm hit correct, correct. Yes. What you did then is you didn't jump. Yeah. Hence then you'll plow it into the floor. Yeah. Is that the softball? It is. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That looked brilliant. It'd be great. Give him the softball. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't got an airflow, so I'll go. Yeah, <laughs> the next we'll, best. we'll just leave the room for a second. <laughs> Let me get my helmet on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most passive aggressive put down I've ever seen in a lesson. <laughs> Softball's for a reason, mate. Yeah. Okay, so I just have a go. Yeah, hit it. Explode out. Like it. Yeah, I like that. Down to up. Good, good action. 97 club head speed. 97 on there. That's normally quicker. There's no way he's jumped that high though, is it? I mean, he has, it is hilarious how much he has to give. That was, well, that was 97. Physically, and then chooses not to. So there is a possibility that there is that. That, that was 97. Give. Go again, that might have been a one-off, might have been a misread, let's hope it weren't. A bit more up, but that's 96.7. Yeah, that's speed. ridiculous. Let's, we got capture. Yeah. So we really started to get Mark to understand as he starts his downswing, the idea is for him to be going down, to be going up. And we actually moved it on for him because that's so hard to time. Because as soon as you send the messages from your brain to your hands to do that on the downswing, you're probably already hitting the ball. That he needed to think of his backswing, his backswing as a process of going slightly up to go down, then come up. So he's actually starting to move this force already in the backswing to influence it in the downswing. And look what happened. Like you can hear that is different. 98.4. <laughs> I'm too cheap, man. Is that, is that point? I am too cheap. <laughs> You did flush that. Come, yeah, yeah. You can see it up there, look. You see the yellow dot on the screen. <laughs> that is hilarious difference. 
showing literally how much you have to give and don't. Just fantastic. Good action. So, so if you look at your unweighting, your unweighting is much better. So what is, what's that showing me? Sorry? So that's showing you sort of your unweighting of your body. Oh, okay. Okay, to create vertical. So you can't get this going up unless this one goes down. Correct. Okay. Whereas there was none of the unweighting up. Okay. Okay. Yep. Now if we look at your vertical, you could even go earlier, to be fair. When does it peak that vertical? Just interest. a tweak before impact, but it could be earlier. But the vertical itself is at 188. So to give you an idea, so this to you feels super early and super crazy, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. This peak, mm -hmm. okay, so the peak on this graph here, mm -hmm. if you watch good players like world class with your iron, would be anywhere kind of around here at that peak. Okay. Yeah. So they're preloading backswings okay. and getting out of that knee flex okay. early. If we look at your knee So your this is this is force. Mm -hmm but it's all in the ground mm -hmm. as the ball is struck. Right, so impact on there is this line. Correct, the white line there. So if I take you to impact, so you've got the visual. Boom, impact's there. You're peaking the force vertically yeah. when you hit the ball. So okay. that energy won't get to the ball. So all this big peak, which is really healthy, mm -hmm. we want that out so you can get it on the club, so then it's the ball. Earlier. W uh, way, way earlier. earlier. Okay. So peak hand speed or grip speed is yeah. happening in both of these at two, this point two players, and now your club is back here. Yeah. Where before it was like down it, it here. Was here. This well, one. Yeah, there it yeah. is. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Which is which is a lot. Yeah. And look at how much we haven't thought about holding angle, have we? No. No. But look how much more angle we've got. To be honest, what I'm thinking about at the moment is just the idea of yeah, scoring yeah. and getting yeah. out. So yeah. You, you could, I'm not thinking about my Yeah. Yeah. No, well, you don't need to. So you, you we could have an explore with that and find even more. Yeah. So McElroy from starting posture, top of his backswing, he's two inches lower. Impact, he's two inches higher. Four inch yeah. so your, pelvis lift. Your backswing here holds the trigger to your impact, yeah. Yeah. being more free flowing. Yeah. And it's the free flowingness is what we were relating to earlier with what you read yeah, from yeah. Sasho. Yeah. The less free flowing I find golfers are, the more they're robotronic yes. try and hit it. They're opener. Static. The more free, for, I did a thing where you, a focus band, it's not focus band, but I put a brain reader on my head. This guy developed this new product. It isn't out yet, unfortunately, but it's amazing. Um, it measures concentration. And they measured me doing putting and other thing, which shows some interesting stuff. But they measured me in full shots. And what they measured is that I have no concentration when I'm hitting full shots. And they, they noticed that with lots of good players that they were testing early testing. Yeah. So there's concentration, there's concentration, there's eye movement, there's eye movement, head movement, head movement. And as soon as they pull back, I just flatline. Because right. I'm just whew, out of it. I'm just literally... Instinct. It's all just chain yeah, reacting on. Like yeah. Instinct, yeah. To the point now where my setup, when I'm hitting the ball, mm -hmm. to get my vertical earlier, I had to do stuff before I hit the ball. Yeah meaning I had to put 100% pressure on this foot to be able to get my weight there earlier, to get it back here earlier, which allowed me to get it down there earlier and up here earlier. It was hilarious how early I had to do it. Bearing in mind, I would say I'm quite good at changing things quite quickly. So what you're doing, you could do it half a swing earlier. Because that feels crazy to you, doesn't it? It, it? I'm looking at that and I'm thinking... It looks so energetic. Yeah. Yes, there you go. That was earlier, wasn't it? That looked good. Oh, yep. ripped it. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. 101. <laughs> That is crazy. Like, talk about leaving it on the table. So you've gone from 88 club, is that club? to That's 101 club. with a seven iron. That's tall pro level speed. Yeah. Peak hand speed. You yeah. can be then very average at other things, but win at that thing, which will get you to sevens or sixes or eights and those kind of things. So bear in mind, your hand speed hasn't really gone up. So the hand speed is the same. It's a, hand speed is exactly the same. 
I'm getting better. But let's be you're just, just using force. Yeah. Well, or, yeah. Also, you're you're using yeah you're using the energies that you put in to put it to the ball. Yeah. Again, it's that and that you know it's that it's there's no point going hit and then like that. It, it's that ridiculous. Like if I did that, if you had a friend or a partner or someone came first lesson and they went hit, oh you want me to go like this? Is that good? You're gonna go no. You got to be. Do it. It's, yeah. got, it. it's not dynamic. It's not a look. It's part of the movement. Yes. You're you're basically were doing that. You were going. Like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great example of how real lessons, not rubbish online cliches, can help golfers make unbelievable gains. Like that is one of the biggest speed jumps I've seen for a player who didn't feel like they were swinging out of their boots, they just felt like doing the same action, just at slightly different times. Really interesting session, hopefully you learned from it. Now, if you wanna learn more about how to hit your driver with those kind of power gains, this video is gonna give you all the information to help you with that.